What's up, bitches? <laughs> it's me, Dave's behind the camera. <laughs> and we're doing a flood crossing. So we're using four mil cable and a D6 gripple um, to run as the top of our netting. And then we're just using 105 blue netting as our infill. So this one's got a bit of water in the bottom and we didn't bring our gum boots. So the way we're gonna do it without getting wet or in the water is we actually measure 105 the whole way across and then we get a measurement from the top of our cable down to the ground level. So say that's a meter and a half. We'll then add two meters and that'll be enough to lay on the ground where if it lifts up, it's not gonna be enough for you know your stock to get through it kind of thing. So then we measure that the whole way across and then where it's across the water, we can't measure our distance. So we just get the two sides on either end and do the same measurement across the middle. And then we're gonna use our guillotine to cut out our netting. So we've marked out one meter spacings just to make it a little bit more efficient so we don't have to measure each time. Got our netting loaded in, ready to go. Basically we'll wind it out, lift it up and then drop it. And it just forms as a guillotine. So we'll actually do all the work on the bank here and then pull it across with a rope so that you never actually have to get down in the gully at all. So our first measurement from the other end is 3.4 meters. So it's 1.4 to the ground and then an extra two, which will be the part that lays on the ground. So we run out our netting. 3.4, a guillotine. Now we've got our first run. So we go wrap it on to the cable, um, clip it on, sort of loose enough that you can still slide it across, but tight that it's not going anywhere. And then we'll repeat. We'll tie a strap on to one edge and then be able to pull it across from the other side, length by length. I'm pulling on the rope. Dave's just holding it up over that tree stump. Yep. Ideally, we would have chopped that tree stump off before we started. So, so we've pulled all of the sheets across. I think there are about 26 in total. We've left enough overhang on the ground so that nothing can try and push under it. We chuck some big rocks on the parts where it sort of wants to lift up for a little bit just to let it settle, and then a couple of pins. It's not gonna hold it down when a flood comes through though. When a flood comes through, the idea is that it all hinges off this top line and the netting just lifts up as the water goes through. Obviously, occasionally, you know, you'll get um, logs or something come through with pieces that stick up through and sort of catch a little bit, but this is another good way to do a gully. You can do the same sort of thing with rubber or you know you see the old ones with tin. So we'll show you how you can also do another gully that's sort of shallower but longer. So with the horizontal sheets, we do it very similar. Um, we just overlap them a little bit and then pop as many clips as we can in to keep it strong. Because once the flood rips through, it's gonna wanna pull those apart. So we clip them all the way across, close spacings together to make it as strong as possible. But the idea is that it'll just lift up with the flood, which this one shouldn't get that much water through it, but you never know. This is our last crossing. It's another really big one. You can see it's very sturdy and hard to lift up. So yeah, it's just another example. There's heaps of different ways to do them, but these work really well for us, so cool.